Hey guys, this is Justin from Canova, and we're here today to teach you how to design your first or your next reptile facility. All right, so you may think this looks just like our regular videos, but this is actually a brand new reptile room that we opened up about six months ago with my good friend, Keith at Mice Direct, which is an awesome rodent producer here in North Georgia. And his business needed to grow to create a new facility. So I thought, let's help him design it. And we'll make an awesome snake room for our joint projects right here, which gave me another chance to rethink the whole thing and fix actually some of the issues that I have in my main facility. So it's a great chance for me to share those with you, talk through the fundamentals of building your first or your next, if you're growing, reptile space. So the first consideration should always be the layout of your room. And you see here, we do follow it a format that's very similar to what we've had in the past. Now reptile racks, they're just made to go against walls. It just works really well. If you have a wide enough space, you can actually do a center column of racks. But we find that wall space is a premium when it comes to reptile facilities because you can push them to the side and have a workspace in between. The next big layout consideration is sinks. It's important to have a really big cleaning sink where you don't have to walk very far to get to where you need in order to get that tub clean. Now we have a backsplash here and several hoses that can stretch across all over the room. That's really important. The other thing is if you can have more than one, it saves that many steps, that much time. You can also work at the same time as maybe one of your friends or family. Snake keeping in general, if you have a larger collection especially, is full of just lots of repetitive tasks. Every week, every day, doing the same sort of things. There's more steps and time you can save yourself, the better. The next major consideration is temperature stability. No matter what kind of reptile you keep, you're gonna to want to be, have control of the temperature of your room. So open air racks, closed air racks, cold weather animals, warm weather animals, you're gonna to wanna to have it so you can dial it in and set it. We go with an HVAC system and we can have more than one zone if we want to. We also use fans just to circulate the air because you don't wanna have a lot of hot air at the top of your caging and cool air kind of floating towards the bottom. So it creates a good mixture. The third thing, of course, is just insulation. When it comes to keeping your temperatures right, you need amazing insulation. You need to go overboard because sometimes that difference between the hot, humid air of a snake room versus the cold, maybe winter air where you live can actually make the walls condense. There's all kinds of considerations around that. A lot of places use heating in the floor if they're up north. We don't have to do that here in Georgia. We do seal our floors with the epoxy to keep the humidity trapped in the room. Otherwise, concrete tends to just suck humidity out of a room and it's hard to keep your animals comfortable. The third major consideration, of course, is power. Reptiles in general need tons of power, whether you're heating them, cooling them, whether you have misters and foggers or lights or whatever, it's gonna require a lot of power. And there's been so many horror stories of people who tried to pack too much power into a space that wasn't ready for it and then had fires or other trouble. So we went overkill on all of our power. We have thermostats, of course, on every rack. We have individual breakers into every rack just to make sure we don't ever overload it. And of course, it's done according to code with extra power buffer built into it. So here we are saying it from the incubator and it actually takes the power topic and we segue into the fourth major point, which is you need to have backup, right? So we have a big generator sitting outside the building which powers the entire building, especially this incubator. You can have a loss of power for a little while, but again, you can have all the best power systems in the world and it doesn't work if you lose power. So we end up at some points of the year, we'll have so many eggs in our incubators that literally you're putting all your eggs in one basket and having a thermostat and a backup thermostat and a backup generator is the only way you actually can get some sleep at night and know that you're protected. The fifth and last point is gonna be kind of vague and widespread, but it basically it is to plan, to think ahead. The one thing I've always learned is actually create more space than you need. You see we have a bunch of empty tubs here. We will probably, probably 
never have that many hatchlings here. This space is actually, it's, it's only half the size of my main facility. I don't think we're ever gonna get close to filling it. But what I've learned is you never know. You never know what growth might bring. You never know if you might quit your job and make this your full-time job like I did over a decade ago. So think ahead. Also little things that we learned from our facility, like putting your incubator on an inside wall, which is more temperature controlled than putting it on an outside wall. Or having the epoxy of your floor lap up onto the sides of the floorboards so that you can clean it much easier. You learn every step of the way, but always give yourself a little bit of room to grow, always think through all the problems that you wanna solve, and then just create a plan and go with it. Guys, that's it, I hope you enjoyed it, and I can't wait to build the next facility. We always find things to improve. If you want more details, on our Patreon, we actually have a Canova University video where we get into the nitty gritty of many of the features of our building and what we've learned along the way. So sign up over there, and thank you to all the Patreons who already have. We'll see you next week.